they will hop on. Thank you, Emily, for that. Um, okay, you guys, I am so excited. Full transparency, just got back from a ball game with my son. So I've got like a hundred pounds of dust in my eyes. And so from scrubbing at them all night, that is why. Um, I am so excited to share. Kate and I have actually been like brainstorming this topic for a while because we wanted to add value because we remember being gold, senior gold, Ruby, and feeling like, okay, like what, what were those things that like we worked through or what were those things that we wish that we knew and what value can we go add to this group? So first off, really proud of you, of you guys for being here. You qualified for this. Y'all are awesome. And so I'm going to uh, share my screen. Somebody let me know if you can see this when I get this up. Um, not this, this one. Okay. Share. Can you all yeah, see my screen? See it. You can yep. see me. Okay. You good? You can see me? Cool. Okay. So we're going to talk about a couple of things. We're going to talk about three main things tonight. Okay. The first thing is Kate and I are going to share a little bit about our journey as to how we met, because it was, it's probably very unique than what a lot of y'all are used to, but it actually goes to show how well networking in person can be for not only your relationships, but for your business and for your overall health, like honestly. Um, and so we're going to be talking about that. Second thing we're going to be talking about is we are going to give you guys kind of our system to how we helped Kate start her business. Like what were some of the things that we did and what, what are some of the things that we would encourage y'all to do if, and when you guys start to get people who want this business on your team, because this has worked for us. So we're going to share that with you. Third and final thing is y'all obstacles are normal. You're going to get them. Okay. But obstacles are never a reason to quit. It is always an opportunity to learn. So we are going to share with you guys obstacles that we faced in our business. And then we're going to turn around and tell you guys what we did and how we move forward and how you can use that to move the needle forward in your business. Okay. Are we excited. I'm excited. Okay. Oh, and also really quick, I'm just going to share this, this picture of Kate and I right here. This is way cute. But you would not have known this about five hours before this picture was taken. Her and I were admitted into a hospital in Alabama for concussions because we had just totaled my car. <laughs> so anyways, I just thought that was funny and wanted to share. Okay. So for those of y'all who do not know me, my name is Taylor. I am an Emerald ambassador. Jordan Roddenberry is, is my upline. And my whole journey with Plexus started back in 2018. So I had just recently had a baby. And I went on a Facebook group and I said, Hey, who in here has a work from home opportunity? Because I want to stay home with my son. Y'all literally in this post, I put no network marketing. Okay. Like I did not want to hear anything about it. So just note to self, don't let that turn you off to not message people if they say that. And Jordan being her brave soul messaged me anyways, and told me about Plexus. And I very kindly said, no, but I watched her for six months and I ended up in a motherhood type of event where I heard somebody talk about their struggle with migraines. Little did Jordan know that had been a 10 year issue for me. So that was very attractive to me. So I went ahead and jumped in and said yes to the products very quickly started seeing some major health wins. And a couple of months later, I decided to share, you will see right here in July of 2018, I decided to share for the very first time. Now, if you were not around then, that was the last 30 days of the leaders retreat contest, which funny enough happened to be a cruise to the Bahamas. Okay. So I was like a baby starting this, but I was determined to get on that boat. So I stayed up late. I did all the things I was coachable and I earned it. Okay. I earned this trip, but y'all the day before I earned it, the boat filled up. Okay. So obstacle number one right here. Okay. I was, I was fresh into my business. I earned this cruise and I couldn't go. And yes, Plexus gave me a $500 payout and it was great. I took my husband to Colorado and we had a date, but y'all, this was a really, really big obstacle to face as somebody brand new into their business. And in this moment, I had a decision to make. I could either sit here and say, oh, woe is me. Like, look at me. I worked so hard. Like I deserve to be on this ship. This is unfair. Or I could say, okay, Taylor, like this hurts. You can cry about it. Like that's normal, but you've proven to yourself that you can do it. So go do it again next year. And that's what I did. And I told myself I was never going to miss a leader's retreat ever again. And to this day, I, I have not missed one. I've earned every single one because I, I refuse to not earn it. 
Second obstacle that hit me very early in my business was I had a almost gold leg completely quit, com- like completely d- dwindle away. So I had, ba- I had basically lost my entire team just a couple of months after starting this business. Okay. Those are two pretty big things that happened to me. But as you will see here in 2019, in January of 2019, God called me away from my corporate job. Okay. Y'all my corporate job, I was making $4,000, $4,000 a month and I carried the health insurance. So when God told me to go, I was terrified. And as you will see, it's because in January of 2019, I ended my Plexus business with 45 points. Y'all, we didn't even have senior silver back then, but if we would have, I wouldn't even have been senior silver. Okay. But because he told me to, to go, I went and I left. Um, A couple of months later, um, in July of 2019, our team ranked gold. And an entire year after that, in June of 2020, our team ranked senior gold. Now, what I didn't put in here, but what what I did want to share was from the month that we went senior gold to the month that we went emerald was less than a year. Less than a year. I had the slowest start ever to my business with obstacle after obstacle after obstacle in my face. We got to senior gold and in less than a year, we became a jewel team. And so what, what I want to share with you here is that you're going to face obstacles in your business. It is going to happen. But like I said before, obstacles are not a reason to quit. They are an opportunity to learn. And that was what I did. I chose belief, not disbelief. And I was willing to work through the hard. And so maybe you're in that season right now. Maybe you're not, maybe your business is booming and that's awesome. And I love that for you. But if you are in a season of hard right now, something that I always told myself was If God is putting me here and if I'm about to do something really incredible, I expect hard to come and I expect the enemy to come. And so just knowing that in the back of my brain, I was ready and willing to take on whatever was thrown at me because I had belief that this business was where I was supposed to be. So that's a little bit about my story. I am going to introduce to y'all Kate and she's so cute. I'm going to put her slide right here. Um, but before I want to have her share, I want to, I I want to tell you guys a little snippet about this. So Kate and I live in the same town. We did not know each other at all. And three years ago, I was desperately praying for help within my home. I could not keep up with the load as a mom. I could not keep up with the demands that just life was throwing at me. And I wasn't going to settle with who I was going to let watch my kids either. So one day Kate's mom posted on our like community page And said, hey, my daughter's looking for a nannying job. And I was like, oh my gosh, please come to my house. Like, please come meet my family. So she did. And for the last three years, Kate has nannied for our family. And she is not just family to me in business. She is like a sister to me in my life and in my home. Um, She's a great role model for my children. um, And I truly, truly love this woman deeply. Um, The other thing, though, is she is 20 years old. She is a full-time college student. Kate, I'm pretty sure you're 20. Um, she's a full-time college student. She is in the number one, like the number one program for entrepreneurs in the country at her school. She is in a sorority. She has tons of stuff going on. She is a Ruby ambassador. And in April, when she ranked up, she earned silver stars, which is incredibly exclusive and truthfully, I think very hard to do. Um, and so she is the real deal and I'm just so excited for her to share. So Kate, do you want to you want to take it away? Yeah. Oh my goodness. I'm like over here tearing up. That's so sweet, Taylor. I, I think the way we met was so natural. Um, mm-hmm. Honestly, I was not looking for that for marketing whatsoever. If you would have told me a year or three years ago that I would be doing this, I would say absolutely not. Um, and truthfully, I think if Taylor and I never met, um, that connection before that we built never would have brought me, like I never would have said yes other, other, otherwise. So it was just really cool to kind of see that all play out and where I am now because it really was a God thing, um, which I think is just so sweet. So um, yeah, so I ordered the fresh or my August of my freshman year of college, which um, I think it was like a week, less than a week before I went to school. I was like, okay, I'm just going to do it. Like, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm just going to do it. Um, the time I was going to a school that was like 12, 13 hours away from my home, I just transferred to a school closer to home. But um, I knew nobody going there. I had nothing lined up, no job. I didn't know a single person. And so I was just very kind of just lost in what I wanted to do with life, where I was going, who I knew, like what I wanted to be. Um, and so Taylor asked me about Plexus like 16 times, you guys. And I told her no, like every single time since so the 17th time, I was like, okay, fine. She's not gonna stop bugging me. So I'm just gonna do it and say yes. So I said yes. Um, and I was so terrified. I just really had no idea what I was doing. I was like, I'm just gonna do the things and, you know, do what she tells me to do, but it's probably not gonna work out. 
Um, but I really wanted to cover the cost of my products because I was going to school and I really didn't have a job, like I said, lined up. And so just being able to cover the cost of my products was like, that was going to be huge for me. And I also love the idea of not having to work a nine to five job while doing um, college full time. And so I just love the idea of it, but I was like, it can't be for me. I'm just going to try, but it's not going to be for me. And that was really my mindset going into this. Um, however, I ended up going fast start silver thanks to Taylor in five days. Um, and I was like, what the heck? It's actually real. Like I'm getting money from this. I can actually do this. And I was on like the biggest high, you guys. Like I was just like, I can do anything. Like I can go silver. I'm going to be diamond in two days. Like I got this. Like that was my mindset. It just flipped completely. Um, but of course that did not happen. You don't go diamond in two days. I learned that very, very early on. Um, but I missed senior silver the next month by two orders and I was heartbroken. It was just that first time my business, like it was two months in, not even. And I just felt like, what am I doing? Like I was already just very confused about where I was going with this, what I was doing. Um, and so that was very defeating for me. However, I chose to keep going think to, to Taylor because she just kind of was like, Kate, like it happens. You're going to go through these things. And so I said, okay, I'm just going to keep doing it. On my very first business builder that next month, um, one of my best friends now and double ranked um, senior silver and gold that month. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. Like, this is amazing. Like, my very first check with a comma in it. And I was like, this is so cool. But then of course, up and down journey again, um, my journey was constantly up and down. It was never, ever, ever a straight trajectory to the top whatsoever. Um, and in 2022, it was the summer of 22. So last summer, I believe that would be uh, my points were below gold. I was senior gold, almost Ruby. Honestly, I was at 350 points and I fell back to, below gold that summer because I was in comparison you guys I was in a, a, a season of just kind of like figuring out who I was um but not because of what I wanted is because of other people what I saw of other people and I just figured I had to be like all these other people who I was seeing duplexes and just succeeding all these kind of things and I was just very much so in a very negative headspace um and I just like froze I was just paralyzed in fear comparison all these negative emotions um but going back to school, I was like, you know what? Like I had to figure this out. Like I had a job with Taylor in the summer and it was amazing. It was like the best thing ever. And then I was like, I'm going back to school now. Like I have, I'm going out of state 13 hours again. Like I have to go through this again and nothing lined up. And so I was like, you know, what? I have to just choose to like embrace the heart. Like I have to just figure it out. Um, and so I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go for it again. Just, just figure out who I am first through Plexus. Like it was a way of me growing through Plexus through my business to where I could get to where I felt comfortable being myself in this company. Um, and so in November, I went to school back back to school in August. So that's like three, four months later, um, I broke 350 again. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's amazing. Um, and then of course in March, we went Ruby, which is really cool. We added 71 people, um, developed 10 silvers and hit, we blew past Ruby. So it's just been the most amazing journey, um, obviously ups and downs, but my biggest, I think, setback or struggle that I went through was comparison, just feeling like I was never enough for myself let alone people that I was leading that I wasn't worthy and so just kind of feeling like I like a breakthrough moment was really huge for me so that's a little bit about myself and my journey it's also getting very dark out here now it was not this dark before so you can barely see me <laughs> it did get really dark yeah I <laughs> um I love everything that you just said and I also think it's like really awesome for people to hear that like there is no mold here like you can like I am a full-time stay-at-home mom. Kate is a college student. Like we are in totally different seasons of our life and yet success has happened for both of us. And yet we've both hit obstacles. So like, it's, it's fine. It's going to happen. Um, okay. These are my kids. They're so cute. Um, but the whole purpose of this slide y'all is we like, we're just going to tell you guys the mold, like this is the mold that we use that I use when helping Kate start her business. Okay. And if you guys have questions, please unmute and ask because I can't see the chat. Um, but something that was really powerful for us was we did one-on-one -on -one power hour type work sessions every single week. Kate and I knew Mondays, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. We are on a Zoom call and we are filling out an IPA sheet. There was no if, ands, or buts. If we were sick, we were there. Like it didn't matter. We were committed. And the reason that we did this is because one, it gave Kate a really safe space to come to me and ask questions, um, and learn, but it also, from a sponsor's perspective showed her that I was willing to get in the trenches with her. I was willing to sacrifice time without my family because she was important to me and what she wanted out of this business was worthy of my time. Um, and so these are some things that you guys can implement as you get new business builders on your team. That's the first thing. Second thing is, Sending podcast to your new business builders, especially if they show hesitation, fear, concern in any area. 
If you guys ask Kate this personally, she will tell you, I sent her a podcast all the time. We would get on a phone call and I specifically remember her saying, Taylor, I'm a little nervous to come across salesy. And I related and I gave her my input, but then I turned around and I went and found a Bob Heilig podcast that related to what she was going through. And I sent it to her and y'all, what this does is it takes the pressure off of us to have to be the expert. And that third party validates what I am already telling her. And so using those as a resource was huge. And then what I actually noticed that Kate started to do was she would walk to her 8 a.m. class in the morning and she would have a podcast on and she'd send it to me and she'd be like, hey, I'm listening like to this podcast and I'm loving it. Have like, have you heard it? She started doing these things without me even telling her because she saw the value it was adding. Um, third thing, meeting in person. I know this is not possible for, for everybody if you don't have a local team, but for the love, y'all, if you do get them in person, it is so good to build that connection and hug their neck and just show them that you love them outside of Plexus too. get in person with your people. Fourth thing, understanding that their belief might not be at the level of yours. Kate, if this is a- accurate, I would say that her belief in this business was not solid for like the first year in her business. She was borrowing a lot of belief that I had because she had seen that it worked for me and she saw how much I believed in her. And y'all, when we pour that belief into our people, when they go through a hard thing, they're going to stick for the most part. Um, fifth thing is do not be afraid to ask them to do things outside of their comfort zone. And y'all, if they are afraid to do it, get in there and do it with them. There have been so many times. I mean, even from like a different perspective in our jewels thread, just today, my upline asked me to do something. And I literally wrote her back and I said, this makes me want to vomit. Sign me up. I'm going to go do it. (laughs) Y'all like, If you're afraid to do something, you got to do it. And don't be afraid to ask your people. There were plenty of times I asked Kate and encouraged her to go do something that she was afraid of. And guess what? She did it every single time, every single time she showed up and she did it. Um, And then last but not least, y'all is accountability. Something that I will never forget is Kate and Jordan Gibson, who was on this call because she's baller paired up very early on in Kate's business because they were very similar. Their morals, their thought process, their commitment to this business was very, very similar. And I knew that to get Kate to really buy into this, not only did she need to believe in this business, but she needed to get connected into our community who wasn't just me. And so I connected her with Jordan and they ran together for a very, very long time. And they're still really great friends today. Um, and so I would encourage you guys to maybe go find people on your team that are in the same area of their business that are equally as committed and have them run together, just have them work together and bounce ideas off of them. So this is literally the structure that Kate and I have followed, like since the day that, that she got started and it's simple and it's easy and it's duplicatable. So this is what we do. Um, and then Kate's going to touch on this one because she's got some really awesome thoughts on this. So. Yeah. I love that Taylor. And like people, like she said, like people oftentimes don't have a team, um, like in person, like a community that's very close by. Um, I have most of my team in person or in my community, which is really, really great. Um, we meet all the time together. And so it's just a good way to kind of connect with them. But I will say, if you don't have a team in person, a really good way to like kind of pivot from there, um, is zoom, obviously like we, I do zooms with my girls or even FaceTime with my girls about just life in general, like constantly. Like I think, there's one thing to do a coaching call once a month. That's one thing or a working call once a month, but to really like hone in on that relationship aspect of what we have here is super important. Um, and I think that's really why my girls who are not close to me whatsoever. And I see one time a year, we're still like best friends because we've really built that relationship really early on in our business. Um, but I know that not everybody's blessed enough to have like a team very, very local. So um, anyways, so lessons that we learned to move past gold. So I can relate to almost every single one of these. I have struggled through all of these. I'm sure that a lot of people have on this call. Um, but the first one, people not seeing their products, people kind of getting the products and leaving and not staying consistent or the business and then leaving. Um, I had a lot of girls go silver and quit people go silver and quit. And that is really on us because we don't provide them enough belief. We don't provide them enough vision to where they don't see past silver. It's kind of silver. And they're like, okay, now what? Like, what do I do now? I'm silver, but like, I did it and I'm done. You know, like it's, it's very much so on us to provide that belief and that vision for them as to where they can go. Um, but also that kind of falls back on, am I worthy enough? Cause I think that's something that I went through. Um, just honestly, like I still do sometimes, I like, guess just 
the the idea of like being worthy of having leaders on your team who really want to grow is something that's scary like it's very very scary and go up and down um but I think the biggest thing is like what am I going to allow that people quitting to say about me like what does it say about me what does it say about who I am um and then after that like, what am I going to do about it am I going to go sulk and quit and throw a pity party or am I going to get up and find somebody else and learn from my mistakes I think it's just very much so a learning process from there um sorry this chat is covering up my screen one second okay um Okay. And then leadership. So honestly, that's something that I did not learn until very late in my business because um, I was just scared of it. Like I said, I didn't feel worthy of being a leader, but one thing that really helped me was just figuring out from Taylor, like how she built me up, honestly. Like I didn't really realize it at the time because we were just so close, but like things that she said to me or did for me or, you know, sent me through messenger or whatever it was, like, it was really just kind of learning from like what how I was brought up in Plexus, you know, kind of like a family almost. Like it's just kind of realizing the culture and figuring out how to not recreate the wheel, but do what you were taught to do, do what's done for you. Um, and then failing forward, this is something that I feel very, very um, strongly about. I think failing forward is so important, especially in Plexus, because we don't come into this business knowing everything. I don't think anybody does. Like, I mean, I came in with not even like no college degree whatsoever. I had high school, like that was it. And I was like, what am I doing? I've never, I don't even post on, I don't even have Facebook right now. Like I didn't even have a Facebook account. And I was like, let's do it. I'm doing it. So it's very much so like a learned thing. Um, And so I can go into this business thinking you're going to know everything and be able to do everything, you know, at once and feel confident about it is very much so a bad mindset because you have to be willing to be able to fail and get uncomfortable um, to be able to learn from your mistakes. Kind of going back to when people quit, like what's going to say about me? How am I going to learn from it and move forward? Um, and then this one also, I can relate to a ton. I've actually have a story on this. So who are my walkers? Who are my runners? I have girls on my team from the day that I started to now who are walkers, who are runners and figuring out who to pour my time into because my time is valuable. I'm a good leader. I know what I'm doing, figuring out how to pour my energy and my time to people that I know are going to use it well and actually implicate, um, things that I'm telling them is very important. So I think just figuring out like not like letting people go, but kind of living them where they're at and saying, okay, like if they're going to stay here, that's fine. But I got to go for my energy and people who really want to go gold or senior gold or emerald or diamond. Um, and then making your team's goals, your goals. Something that I learned very early on in this business as well was figuring out that it's not about me. Um, a card the other day, it was kind of figuring out like I developed my very first silver and I was like, I went silver and I was like, oh my gosh, it's so cool. Like I just went silver, but the feeling of my the feeling of when I developed my very first silver, I was like, this is 10 times better because what we have with Plexus is so cool. It's just, there's so many opportunities to find freedom financially or health wise or community wise. And so I think just figuring out like that it's not about us. It's about them. What we can do for them is super important. Um, and then the four pillars as well, honestly, this is just self-explanatory. I feel like if you, if you don't lean into all these four things, like you're not going to grow. And if you do grow, it's not gonna be sustainable. Like these are just super important as well. Um, and then learning about your team, how to communicate. So I'm a very red personality, Enneagram three. Like I am very much so not very like emotional. Like I'm emotional. I don't want to sound like I'm like cold hearted. I'm not cold hearted, but I'm definitely not like a yellow. Um, I wouldn't say, but I'm very much so just a very, 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 very Enneagram three red personality. And so for a while, I taught, I taught all of my girls like Enneagram three tendencies. I was like, okay, like you can make this amount of money this month. Like you can earn this this month. And they were just kind of like, eh, okay, like you have fun with that. Like I'll watch you do it. And I was like, Taylor, why are they not wanting to earn these things? Like, this is so cool. Like I want to make a thousand dollars a month. Why don't they? Like, I was just very much, I was just like, what is going on? And so figuring out like how they learn how to communicate, how they understand this is super important because not a lot of things that interest you might not interest them as well. And so figuring out kind of who they are before you coach them is super important. Um, one thing that we do on our team, we have like a personality test, like an Enneagram test. And then we also have the color personality test. Um, it's not like always super duper accurate, like the T, but also gives you a good, good idea of like who you're coaching, what they want, how they learn that kind of thing. So hopefully those were helpful, but I had a question. Um, these are obviously all things that are super important. And I feel like as a business but uh, business leader and people who are gold or above go through these things every single day with their business builders anybody like relate to these or have a season of life where they've gone through this and has like a story of how they got through it or what helped them or just a memory or like a lesson they learned from it they want to share so I feel like all of these are super relatable
I know Katie does. I feel like, I feel like you need to share. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I relate to so much of what Kate said, because I also am like a super hard read. And so some of the things that, that I had to like learn and, and grow is like, again, I would talk about the same thing. Like I, you can earn this amount of money and like, they wouldn't even respond. And it was like, I remember one time I invited someone to a call and they, it was just like really heartfelt. And they're like, Oh, like I could help people. Like they had never thought of it like that. You know, I just had never like spoken their language. And it's like, if you've ever read like the, the, the love language book, like in relationships, it's like, literally I was speaking to them in Spanish and they didn't understand Spanish. Like that is how cut and dry it is. Um, and then I also think just like, like number five, um, where it's like, when, and what you guys talked about, like with like making your team's goals, like your goals, like you can't get beyond a certain point. Like you really, if you're someone who's on this call and you're like, oh, I'm at gold and I'm feeling quote unquote stuck, which I hate saying, like, it's because like you have to make the people around you, like their goals, like your goal. Um, and, and really, truly like, it's a whole nother, like mindset shift of like, okay, now I'm going to go help this person, go help their people. And then we're going to help that person help the, you know, like, it's just such a different tweak. But when you are just as excited, if not more excited for your team's goals, it's like, it just kind of like happens. Like you're like, I mean, like Kate, like she blew past Ruby the month that she went Ruby, but that was because she was so focused on like, okay, this person's going senior silver. She's going gold. She's going silver. She's going silver. And I just like, obviously all added up. And it was like, boom, way past Ruby. So those ones like totally stick out for me in my business, at least. Yeah. I love that. I think what's also cool about like the figuring out who's on your team and how they communicate is also like, it's not just in plexus, like, it's also in life too. Like, how can you be a better human person next to you? Like maybe they don't like to talk about their emotions. Maybe it makes them uncomfortable. How can you change your mind and talk about something different? Like, how can you, it just kind of goes back to just growing yourself, like personal development as well, not just with, like marketing or plexus wise, but also goes back to like, how can I be better for the person next to me? Um, and just figuring out like how, you know, your differences make you special and how it's not just all about what you think and how you learn. It's also learning how people around you learn too. So I think that's super cool. Just things that I've learned from plexus that I've been able to translate into just like being a better human, like, cause we all can be, you know? So it's just cool to kind of translate things that we learn you know, in this to our outside lives and how, you know, we live our day-to-day -day life. So that's really all I have for this slide. If you want to go to the next one, Taylor. Gotcha. Can you see oh, it? Wait, this is me. Oh, wait, this one's me too. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, yeah, I can see it. Okay. So um, what is your six month goal? So we talk about this a lot in our team, figuring out what our goals are um, and writing that on paper, like writing them down is like a must on our team. Like, I think Jordan says this, like probably every single coaching call that we have, she's like, write them down, write it down, write it down, write it down. Because, um, we had a retreat in Arkansas and we made like vision boards. And ever since that day, I've been like, this is just so, it just seems so much more possible because it's like, what are you working towards? You know, like figuring out what you're working towards and like why you're working towards it is super important. Um, so the first thing that we, th that we came up with was schedule time to work. Um, figuring out like what's your day look like and how you're going to fit it in. We are all busy. We all have things going on in our lives <clears throat> and just figuring out like how it's going to fit in our day is super important um, and actually making it happen. Like, I think that's the hardest thing. Anybody can say, you know, talk the talk, but you can actually walk the walk when it comes to practicing your IPA and doing the things. Um, also, I feel like this is also something that I've been guilty of. People on my team have been guilty of. I think it's everybody has at some point, but figuring out like, are you doing your work that's going to move the needle forward in your business? Are you making graphics for an hour and calling that your IPA? Like, is that going to be what's your time spent doing, you know, your, your work for the day? Or are you going to actually go message people and talk about Plexus and share the, share what we have and post about it and do follow-ups and actually do things that are going to move the needle forward. Um, so figuring out, like, are you going to do it? And also like, what does that consist of? Because that's super important too, because I think a lot of times we can say, you know, I'm just going to check, check it off, check the box off and say, I did it. You know, I think that's super easy to do just figuring out how to feel fulfilled. Um, honestly, when you actually look at yourself, you're going to hold yourself accountable in that aspect as well. Um, and then, like I said, putting on paper, this is, we talk about this all the time on our team, like every, every single week. Um, and I think this also goes back to like, how would you feel if you're working, but not really knowing what you're working for? Like we talked about this on our goals call, I think last month too, but just figuring out kind of what you want like goes back to your why as well just figuring out why you're working because I feel like if you are pushing yourself going hard doing the things every single day it's like well for what like what am I working towards what am I 
what's the end goal here? If you don't have that on paper in front of you every single day, you're not going to get there. It's not going to, it's going to be for nothing, honestly, because it's like, well, what, what was this work for in the first place? Um, and then what book are you reading? Taylor can tell you, I was like the worst, like everything she told me to do. I was like, okay, I'll do it. But when it came to, when it come to books, I was like, mm, you know, I really just don't enjoy reading. I'll read a good Colin Hoover book, but like past that, no thanks. That was really, I just, I just did not enjoy books that weren't Colin Hoover. That was just my jam. Um, and so she told me about this book. I think we read it for a book study one year or one, yeah, one year, my first year, I believe in Plexus. So last year, um, get over your damn self. That book literally changed my mindset for personal development. Like, like that, like that is my favorite personal development book in the entire world. Um, so I think just figuring out too, like what you like, like, do you like something that's going to be very much so like long-term, like here's step by step by step, or you want someone that's going to kick you in the butt and say, you got to, you got to figure it out. Like you got to get there. And that's, that's me. I like to kind of fix, kind of like, like get the little kick in the butt, I guess is what I like just figuring out like who I am. Um, so that's kind of what I, oh, Jordan, I don't know. <laughs> okay, fine. I'll do it. Um, so yeah, that's really all I have for that slide. I'm pretty sure that's it. Yeah, that's oh. it. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna stop sharing. So there, so I can see everybody. Um, ask okay. Everybody. Did she? I couldn't see any any of the chats. So <laughs> yes, you for sure should. Um, okay, y'all. That is all that we have for you tonight, and I hope that it was super motivating. I just I don't want y'all to be afraid of obstacles or issues or anything like that. Like I, I want y'all to like run towards the idea of failure. I want you guys to like run towards the ideal ideal. No idea of facing hard things in your business because every single time, and I'm sure Kate would say this too. And everybody else on this call, every single time I have gone through a seriously hard thing in my business, ask me six months later where my business was. It sure as heck was not still where it was six months ago. It was somewhere further down the line because we have to go through these things to learn. And so anyways, I really hope that this was helpful for y'all. Does anybody have any questions or did anybody put any in the chat that I missed? I want to make sure that we answer any. Right. That Somebody that asked Kate what she did to kind of help build her confidence in herself and kind of stop comparing um, whenever you were in that season. So I, I remember you talking about this at our team retreat too, Kate. So that yeah, I just saw yeah. that question. Yeah. Thank you. I didn't see that one either. Um, yeah, that's a good question. So honestly, it was hard. Like, I feel like I went through that season for a very long time, even though I had to kind of get my crap together when it was August, when I was going back to school, I was still going through that. I was still comparing, but I was like, you know what? Like I, I just got to put my head down and work. Um, but honestly, that's not the best answer to kind of ignore it. And so I talked to Taylor a lot about it. I kind of just vented to her all the time about it. They got that person in your life that you can just kind of just tell things to, I'm not going to get annoyed or bothered or whatever people that you trust. Um, and then also something that I did like physically, like, like tactically, I guess was, uh, the mute button on Instagram or Facebook. You can like mute people. Um, it sounds like dramatic, but honestly, just seeing if you, if I guess it's, one of those things where it's like, if it's really bothering you, if it's really like stunting your growth, like you got to do what's best for you. Um, I think Charlie actually told me about that. And ever since that day, like, I mean, obviously I'm, I feel much better about it now, but just figuring out who you want to be and figuring out what's holding you back and then making that move to maybe it does sound dramatic or over the top, but it really helped me um, just kind of not seeing that every single day and figuring out, you know, who I was without having to base it on other people. So hopefully that helps. And if I remember Kate, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but like, I, I feel like something that you said in that season two was like, like you kind of like put like certain people like up on a, like a pedestal where it's like, well, she's like where I want to be. So I have to go do it this way. But like, it just like sucked all of the joy out of your life. And it like totally just put like glasses over who you actually were and what you were actually good at. So like recognizing that, like even people that you might put on a pedestal in this business, they still struggle. Like they are not perfect. Just because somebody shows up a certain way on social media does not mean anything about like what actually truly could be going on. And so like recognizing the fact that social media also is like not always reality and like, you know, in that way too. Um, but okay. I love that. And you've totally been yourself and now you're just killing it. Um, 
Were there any other questions? I'm trying to scroll through through here. Did we miss anything else? Or does anybody have have one? Yeah, go for it. Um, So with you being Emerald Taylor and then Kate, well, I'm on your way to Senior Ruby, it sounds like. um, Do you guys still talk and interact um, as much as you did? Like when you, you know, you kind of said like, this is what we did to like get her started and things like that. Like, do you still get on those power hours and work together? Do you still like, talk to each other constantly or uh, because Kate in theory knows what she's doing now she's like teaching other people to do it like do you guys not like do you not spend as much time doing those things and Taylor you've kind of like allotted your time elsewhere to like other new business builders like that kind of dynamic I guess yeah that's a really good question um Kate and I talk a lot <laughs> um we probably talk every day to be honest um it's not always about plexus I mean we're we're really good friends outside of plexus so we talk a lot anyways but as far as plexus goes I I would definitely say that I have taken a step back and I have let her lead because she does not need me anymore she knows how to do the things um and that has proven with her success here. So obviously I am available for things that maybe she might need me for that I think are worthy of like me stepping in. But as far as like her leading her team, um she's she's doing it by by herself. Really, I'm not really as I mean, I'm involved, but I'm not like coaching and like training her team if that makes sense. Um, we do not do as many work sessions. I feel like we probably should. I think that would be actually fun to get back to, but no, I would say that we probably stop doing that as often around between gold and senior gold. It was kind of the whole, like I do, we do, you do thing that Bob highly talks about. It's like, I did it for Kate for a while. So she saw, and she learned from me and then we did it together. And then I, kind of let her go on her own. Once I saw that she was capable of getting results without me, that's kind of when we stopped doing them as, as frequent. And I think if I can add on to that, I think something that's really cool too, um, is that like Taylor and I, like we do, we don't do work calls as often, like with just her and I, but like, I'll do them for my team and like, she'll be on with me. Like, it's kind of cool. Just kind of see like, like you said, like I do, you do, we do, like she did it for me and then I'm doing it for my team, but she's still there. Like, it's not like she's going to disappear once, you know, I figure it out. Um, and also I think that's really cool too, is like, I think you're always going to need your sponsor, like no matter how, where you get in life or people, just not even your sponsor, people that like, you know, got you where you are today. Like, I think it's really important. Um, and Taylor and I are, are very different people. Like I, she's very much so emotional and I, I am emotional, but I'm much more like harder to break I would say emotionally than Taylor that's true um, so it's cool because like my team gets both of us like, my team gets somebody who's Enneagram three and red but also somebody who is very emotional and loves to you know dive deep I think it's just very cool to kind of have both sides of that for for both of our teams um so I think it's a very good mix of like she's she's let me go do things on my own but also like she's still there for where I'm still not lacking but where I where she can kind of fill in where she has those um, talents and that kind of thing. So. Yes, I am very emotional and Kate is not. We're a really good duo. (laughs) That was a really good question, by the way. Does anybody else have anything they want to ask? No. Okay. Well, thank y'all so much for being on here. This has been so fun. Thank you guys for giving Kate and I the opportunity to come in here and give you guys some of our thoughts on on some things. And I'm really excited to see where y'all's businesses go in the next six months. So love y'all. Have a good night.